It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Ralphie, the Temple Football Equipment Manager. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on here, Brandon. It's an honor, and this is my first interview actually talking about my experience working in the sports industry. So I thank you enough for sending me your um, invitation to this. Immediately, I knew I wanted to do it, so um, here we are. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you talk about what your experience is like being an equipment manager and how you knew that you wanted to become one? Okay, so um, this all started when I was in the eighth grade. Um, When I was 14 years old, eighth grade, um, I became one of the water boys for um, my football football team at the time. Um, Everyone else was a girl. I was the only boy that was um, a football manager. and immediately I just, you know, I knew I couldn't play sports. One, I don't have the body. Two, I get tired easily. And three, um, I can't process things that fast, that quickly. So I thought to myself, you know, if I can't be you know, in pads, might as well help out. And I ended up loving it. I loved being the water boy. <laughs> and that was one of my favorite things. And, um, you know, obviously when I'm a 14-year-old kid, you people are going to make you know, kids are kids, you know, I've been told things like, you know, you can't do this, only the girls can do it, you know, things like that, yada, 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 but I'm like, you know, the girls can do it, I can do it too, who cares, it's it's for the love of the sport, Um, and I loved every second of it, Um, when I got into ninth grade, you know, first year of high school, um, I was, again, a water boy, but I did have a couple other side jobs as well, in my second week of football camp, I got promoted to do a freshman team, the JV team, and the varsity team. I got assigned all three teams um, after just two weeks. And, you know, I'm only four. At the time that happened, um, I was about to be 15. But I must have really impressed. So I'm like, I'm very happy that I was able to get promoted to work with all three teams. Um, I went to all the away games, all the home games. So I missed a lot of class. But, you know, I was able to maintain my classes. I mean, I didn't get the highest GPA, but... It's all good because um, I end up graduating on time, and it really enhanced me well because you know I was balancing school, the football team, and work too. I was working at 14 years old, um, and working since I was 11. So, had a bit, I've been I've been a very busy kid lately. Um, even though I was never in pads, and this all started when I was in middle school, it got me a lot of friends. It got me through getting to know a bunch of people. And all these connections, all these cool photos you see, all these people that know you through working with the team, and it helped me build confidence. So I'm like, you know what? I think this is going to be my one of my careers, working with football teams. And um, as time went on, I was a I was a, a manager for my high school's wrestling team, for the, my high school's track team, and um, in my first year of uh, community college, I went to community college first before I went to Temple University. And I was actually the water boy for the community college's basketball team. But, um, you know, I wasn't just doing water for the community college. I was doing water. I helped put the the towels on the seats. I was setting up, you know, a court as well. Um, Anything that the coach needed me to do. And it was the same thing when I was in high school too. It wasn't just doing water. I kind of had to put help put on ads. I had to stand in a certain way. I also had to, you know, Make sure things were going smoothly. Um, I actually had to, when I was in high school, we didn't just have water. We also had Gatorade. So I had to literally put like two or three packs of jugs of Gatorade and just stir it, stir it, stir it, like a big soup. Um, and, you know, I got letters of recommendation as well. I was able to use my coaches as references. Every single coach I was able to use as a reference of the sorts. Um, whether it was the head coach or just assistant coach I was able to use them to get some connections around and um when I was when I was about 17 years old um and at the time I was a junior in high school 
and even a little bit before, I knew I wanted to go to Temple University, and I knew I wanted to go and work for the football team. The only reason I even picked Temple Temple University in the first place was because of the football team. And um, and I'll never forget this too. When I was in my first year of community college, I reached out to the equipment manager for Temple. Time, I was expecting a simple no, um, because I asked, "Can I come shadow?" And I was expecting a no. About 20 minutes later, on my way home, I get an email back saying, yeah, we can make that happen. Send me your re resume and your references. And I started jumping with joy because that was the first I'm about to visit an, an equi a real equipment room for a Division One football team. And I was so happy too. So immediately I started getting on. Okay, I, I remember just being in like the library and just working on my resume, working on my references. Looking at the grammar, you know, I'm packing it in. And um, when I got to the, it was in February when I visited the equipment room for Temple Football. And I just, I'll never, it was one of the best days of my life because it's a far enhancement from being a water boy. It's more intense, it's more committed. And I I knew to myself that I wanted to do it. And, you know, because, um, and well, more is history. I had to keep working hard in community college get the GPA, get the acceptance letter. And as soon as I got accepted to uh, Temple, I called the executive assistant to the football coach and I said, you know, I got accepted to the school. Now what? I want to work with the football team. And, um, you know, and, you know, even as I grew up, I'm like, you know, it's been fun being the water boy. I got a lot out of it. It's my first job of working in the sports industry. Um, but it's time to enhance it. So I pretty much fell in love and wanted to be an equipment football manager simply because yeah, because of its sports operations. Um, even, and it's far different than Waterboy, but I, I knew I wanted to do it because of my love for the sport. The brotherhood, the brothers that I've met through football, the enthusiasm, the culture, um, and whether it's paid or not, and it may not be a lot of money, but it, it's simply, I, I wanted to be an equipment manager because of the love for the sport and working behind the scenes. And I'm really, that's really the reason why I chose it because of the love for the sport. I may have not been able, I may have not been in pads. I may not be a coach, a part of the team and I love it to death. That's so amazing and so inspirational. What is the day-to-day -day like for equipment manager? Okay, so, um, we would have to be at the equipment facility by usually by 7 a.m. Okay. But, you know, when it's go in, it's time to go. You know, it's, you know, making, making sure the practice jerseys are ready to go. The practice pants are ready to go. Um, I didn't do too much with shoes, but, um, you know, we kind of have to, it's basically, it's sort of like customer service, sort of providing the best service that you can. But, you know, it has to be correct. Um, the labels need to be correct. You know, setting up the fields, you know, putting the pads here. Um, trying to understand what each coach wanted because the foot, the practice football field is 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 big. Sorry, excuse me, but you know each coach it works. You know the offensive linemen, the quarterbacks. Everyone has their own separate space, so we have to do our very best to know like you know where where each coach is going to be. So it's you know setting up setting up the field. Um, setting up the time clock, um, you know, adjusting helmet if we need to, finding, a, uh, you know, packing the luggage for the home or the away game, you know, with everyday, ba everyday stuff, whether it's wristbands, um, little tools for the helmets, um, an extra pair of shoes, possibly. It's basically, it's all not just practice too it's luggage it's um it's also the new gear as well we have to keep on the lookout we have to be aware of when the new gear is coming so we can label it put in the right cubbies um you know, every every day after practice we do the laundry we separate um we put them in we do our very best to pay attention to details to make sure that the clothing goes in the right cubby as well um if there's any grass stains any you know um any or reps, you know, we have to, you know, report it, or we have to try our very best to get off like all the, all the green stains and all that, all that messy stuff off the jerseys as well. 
Um, we also, the other thing too that we also do is um, we also have to make sure that, you know, when it comes to like packing luggage and packing jerseys, is that it is the correct one. Um, we make sure that there's no, we didn't leave behind any helmets. Uh, we also have to, um, you know, when we decal the helmets, we have to make sure that it's just right, okay? Because um, it's very specific when it comes to decaling. And, you know, I can't decal for the love of me, for the life of me. So, and I can rip it off. <laughs> but um, it's a lot of paying attention to detail and just getting ready for the upcoming game, whether it's bye week. It's a lot of preparation that goes on in everyday things as well. And especially with, you know, getting the coffee ready, getting the snacks ready for the football players, um, filling the coolers with water, filling the coolers with uh, Coca-Colas, um, power, um, power rates, things like that as well. Can you talk about, of course, the difference between being a student equipment manager versus the like equipment manager? Okay, so being a student manager, um, obviously school comes first, you know, classes come first, GPA comes first, you know, they gotta keep on top of that. Being um, a regular equipment manager, like my boss, um, you know, obviously you're not in class because, you know, if you're, you're done, you graduated. Uh, but the head equipment manager or even the assistant equipment manager, you know, not the student, not, you know, not student related. Uh, they, they are in charge of ordering the attire, ordering the apparel, um, figuring out, you know, the setup of the, of the field. Um, they are always ones in the room and the last ones to leave okay um they also their backups for anything whether a coach can't be available you know they throw the footballs uh they also have to make sure that you know things go as smoothly as possible because you know when my my head equipment manager who um you know she's not a student um but she knows that you know i'm a student everyone else is she basically she has to make sure that we you know we are on on top of our stuff so that way, you know, she doesn't get in trouble either, that, you know, she's doing her job. She's doing constructive criticism. She's making sure that, you know, we have what we need, you know, what we need to have for the next game, for the next practice. Basically, they are they are the backbone of, of us because they have to make sure everything is going just as smoothly as possible and as attention to detail as possible, too. And um, it's also... I think one of the important things, uh, the the big difference between a student and a regular equipment manager is um, the regular equipment manager kind of has, I feel, has to have um, more patience and has to love what she or he is doing. And that's how I feel about my equipment manager was because um, she was very um, patient and um, and very understanding of us. So I feel like um, you have to be like, a mentor. You have to be a mentor. You have to be a leader, and you also have to be a boss. Um, and I think it's just the main difference was. Um, I think the main difference is just more of a boss position than a student position. If that makes sense. Yes. Can you talk about whenever it comes to, of course, Temple getting new um, gear, like clothes wise? Is equipment managers normally the first person to see it and be like, hey, I might want this? Or do you have to wait oh. until the players get all the stuff and then you can have whatever is left over? Okay, so um, the equipment managers do get the stuff. They get to see it first. But no one gets anything until the football players get it first. Okay, so, um, you know, I, I um, actually – Got a wristband right here, <laughs> um, but that's only because um, we have a bunch of leftover. And um, so when, when we get new attire, whether it's t-shirts, pants, wristbands, gloves, we have to give it to the football players first. You know, we have to label it. We have to make sure it's the right size. And we put it in the cubby, you know, in a neat fashion organization. But it's not just football players, too. It's the football players. It's the coaches. It's our video crew. You know, they get our stuff. They get the stuff first before we do. I mean, sometimes, you know, someone might be like, okay, I'll just take this. <laughs> but, um, but the rule of thumb is that everyone gets it first and we get it last. And I can understand that too. You know, you know, it's all about 
the football players because you know they're playing they get the cool stuff and even as equipment managers we have gotten cool stuff like we've gotten backpacks we've gotten t-shirts we've gotten shoes we've gotten a, a bunch of really cool things as well we've gotten um wristbands of course um we also you know um we got a couple other sets of stickers as well but um yeah but we get it last and you know i don't have a problem with that because um i'm not there for the stuff i'm there for the game itself for the love of the sports um so getting the stuff um it's cool but it's not the number one thing I, I saw you were a fan engagement, like you worked in fan engagement for basketball. Can you talk about that? Okay, so um, fan engagement well, operations. I My first year at Temple, I remember just going to um, one of the athletic departments, and I talked to the head boss that runs um, the fan engagement operations. Um, and I full out said, you know, how could I get involved? And they're like, just come. And that was pretty much it. I mean. You know, and this is how I learned that the power of just simply asking leads to a big pain reaction. It came from a simple question. And I, and you know, I came and I loved it. So, one of my, this is one of my favorite jobs working in fan engagement operations for the basketball team. I actually got to fire the t shirt gun into the crowd. So, when it was time to like, you know, for the little breaks or for like, um, the timeout, I would get the gun, I would start running to the field, and I would just shoot and shoot and shoot. And it was one of the my favorite things ever. I'm so enthusiastic. I'm dancing. I'm waving. It's a lot of fun, and I loved it. And, um, you know, we also got to do some of, like, the little – I also got to manage the inflatable – um, the inflatable basketball court for the kids, you know, because kids do come to the games. Um, I got to also um, be on like the, the jumbotron, like the big screen on the, at the basketball team, you know, just doing my thing, doing the operations. Um, we also do, um, I uh, I had to escort some kids onto like the field, the field sometimes because, you know, a lot of the stuff does involve kids and, you know, it's family friendly. And that's one of the things I love about it too, is that it's just generally friendly. Um, you know, we had to get a, give away um, ice bags, you know, that contain like a t-shirt, a, a cup, uh, maybe a little toy in there, things like that. Um, and they, they took really good care of us. Okay. We got, I ate so much pizza in the break room. They always feed us. They always feed the behind the scenes people. And I ate a lot of pizza. I, and I drank a lot of soda, <laughs> but, um, and it's actually because of my, and that's when I realized, I think I'm into marketing actually, because, um, I go to Temple as a media studies and production student, but after finding my love for fan engagement operations and, um, just being in, engaging with the crowd and being able to kind of be in your face kind of thing, but also at the same time, um, just bringing joy and smiles and laughter. I realized that I think I like marketing um, and I'm thinking about taking some marketing classes when I head back to Temple, especially because Temple offers digital marketing classes and a lot of sports, you know, that's Temple is very huge on sports and, you know, sports culture. So, um, and, you know, and there's a couple of classes for sports and marketing. So, you know, I realized I think I like marketing um, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. And, you know, as much as I do kind of miss being a fan, I think I'd rather work for the behind the scenes even more. Um, and it's just being able to, and especially escorting the other mascots. Like I've gotten to escort Hooter the Owl, who's our mascot, but I've also met a couple of other mascots. I met the, the mascot for the Eagles, the mascot for the um, for the Sixers, and a bunch of mascots from um, other schools and other other different organizations. You meet some really cool people through this as well. Um, the other thing too, the music, it's, it's just all in, engaging with the scenery is how I would say it. And especially when you're able to, um, you know, jump up and down uh, and everyone's seeing how enthusiastic you are. It's just, a, it's just a love of, it's for the love of the people is why I love it. And, 
Can you talk about your time as the um, cameraman for the um, sports network at Temple? Yes. So um, I was a cameraman for um, Owl Sports Update. It's our sports radio show. And I, that's when I realized even more how much I love sports media. So um, as a cameraman, and I also was able to get control of the teleprompt. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of studying, okay. And some there's been times where my my hands would get very tired or very numb, but I'm like, you know, just gotta push it through, push it through. Um, you know, I had to make sure, you know, to understand, you know, you know, understand close up, super close up, not too close up, because I had to make sure that the camera was just right as well. Um, but there's also like a lot of paying attention, yeah, like you know. We'll get assigned to camera one, camera two, camera three. To double make sure, because sometimes it is easy to accidentally zone out. And I had to, you know, pay attention to the voices, pay attention to the scenery, pay attention to the lights on my camera to make sure it wasn't me that was on. So, you, you know, I want to do my job. I want to show that I can do it. Um, I first started off as camera three, which was, didn't get as much movement, but as time would process, I would get, you know, to the more... You know, I said are more a little they move around more, they do more intensity because a lot because when I first started it was only for like the side, the side shots. But as I progress, it would go into like, you know, face forward. That's right there. But I, I really improved. Um I'm able to understand, you know, where the button is for zoom, where the button is for, you know, blackout. And just making sure that the camera is also locked in to move it's it's not too wildly, it's Make sure that the camera is just right, especially with the scenery and under, and you know un, being able to work the microphone, um, and it's also understanding the teleprompt too to make sure it's not going too fast as well because you know that's just as important as the camera because you know the anchors are reading off of it, and I think I've um done a make sure a good job of and you know paying attention to my hand paying attention to what I'm saying paying attention to um how the anchors are reading it, um understanding the speed, understanding the pace. So, and you know, I also have a mental disability too. So um, it's a little bit challenging because you want to make sure that everything's all right. But I think I also, you know, I think I really beat in my mental disability and um, very proud of myself for that as well, that I was not able to let, you know, this little flaw get in the way of my That's wonderful. Can you talk about your time your short time with the Philadelphia Flyers before COVID and what you were doing? Yeah, so uh, it was uh, the Philadelphia, it was the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, I was hired as a publication vendor. Um, my, my job would have been to um, to um, sell yearbooks, uh, sell sports cards, uh, be in all of the levels, all the seats of, of um, Citizens Bank Park. Um, I got the job because of my my um, engagement with the fan engagement operations at Temple for the basketball team. It's actually because of my little question of how do I get all of this that led to my job to working with the Phillies. So this is what, what I mean when I say it's a big chain reaction. Um, but unfortunately, um, I can't I can't get to in that because I actually got hired seven days before we went into full lockdown actually. <laughs> yeah, so I did get hired, but and I knew the job description of what I'd be doing, but I got hired exactly seven days before coronavirus hit. Um, I was very disappointed. I was very sad because this came, I needed this for my career. Um, I needed this to build up my network. I needed this to build up my connections. That's, but, um, yeah, I can't, I don't really know what more to say to that because, you know, that's one of my careers that did get slowed because due to the pandemic. Um, but, you know, I still have my spot with them and I hope to go back, you know, this year in 2021. But, because um, that, that is a dream come true job. Um, but what, if, what advice would you have upcoming, of course, football equipment managers that are looking to get into being an equipment manager okay so my advice to anyone that wants to work as an equipment pool manager specifically um 
number one, you need to be committed, okay? Because, you know, committed, it's a very intense, hardworking job, okay? It's, you know, we don't play around when it's time to, it's all, I mean, you know, one thing when we win a game, it's one thing when we're having jokes, you know, engaging with the with everyone in, in the facility. But when it's time to work, it's time to work, all right? Commitment means, you know, being able to, you know, set the whole friend thing aside and get to work. Um, number two, you know, be enthusiastic, you know, actually actually want to be part of it. Because, you know, if you're not, if you're joining because, and you're not going to be happy, then don't do it. You know, if you want to, if you love sports, you know, if you love sports, I recommend this job. But, you know, if you want to be part of this job, love sports. <laughs> Um, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Um, number three, you know, number three, ask questions, you know, ask questions like, you know, paying attention to detail in this job is very important because, you know, you're also managing footballs, you're managing the size of like helmets, you're making sure that everyone gets the long, their clothing rights. So, you know, right, ask you. questions, don't be afraid, you know, like a whole team, you know, ask questions okay. as well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Number four, yeah, don't, ex don't expect to get famous, okay, because, you know, not everyone gets to be famous, I mean, that's not really as common, but if you're doing it for like the fame, the fortune, the money, you're not, this isn't the job for you, you're not going to be happy, I'm telling you that right now. Um, you know, you understand that money is important, but, you know, as an equipment manager, like, you know, I mean, it doesn't pay like a whole lot. Like, I mean, it's not like, it's not like a, a Tom Brady salary. Um, I'm just saying like, you know, don't do it for the money. Do it for the love of it, because you're going to be really happy about any of the reasons for the reason we're joining this in the first place. But number five, have fun. Okay. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of, you know, time efficiency, a lot of consistency, a lot of, you know, a lot of um, unexpected, unexpected surprises. But that doesn't mean, and you know, it's not like any ordinary job. Okay, this is this job is fun. It's enhanced. Um, but also just be be able to, um, you know, enjoy the company. Enjoy the laughs, enjoy the memories. I, I took a, a bunch of pictures with my friends, um, friends that started off as strangers, uh, who then became coworkers as I got more into the Temple football team. But now they're my lifelong friends, and I can't can't be any more thankful for the fun, the memories, the enthusiasm, the wisdom, and um, the the friendship that they've given me. That's you know, as long as you're you you are having fun, and you're also being able to keep on top of the things that you're supposed to do. You know, it's like in any ordinary job that you do. Like you know, you go to an ordinary job, whether it's cashier or grocery store, and you know, you make some people laugh. You make maybe make a friend, a couple friends here. It's exactly like that, but here it's more different because it's career-wise. You're with people who enjoy you enjoy, and um. I was able to, you know, I've taken some constructive criticism, you know, don't be afraid to take constructive criticism because, you know, you know, a lot, you know, you're working with coaches, you're working with um, a bunch of people who are in the moment. So, um, you know, I have to learn to eventually get thick, thick skin because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of yelling, a little bit of swearing, um, a bunch of really loud noises. Um, you know, with, you're with a bunch of, you know, six, seven foot guys the whole day, um, with a lot of heavy equipment. Um, but basically it's like, and, you know, just enjoy, enjoy it, but also be, um, be able to do the work is what I'm saying. Okay. And, um, that's my advice to anyone that wants to be an equipment manager. It's just, you know, love the sport, you know, love, love the sport, do what you do, what you need to do. Um, and above all, just, um, you know, be, be the best that you can be, you know, you don't have to be perfect, just be the best you can be. Um, and on my personal standpoint, 
I fell in love with being an equipment football manager. Like it's gotten me the greatest friends. It's gotten me the greatest memories. It's gotten me the greatest advice, not just for football, but also for life. Um, and I'll never forget when I first got the job to be an equipment manager and my head equipment manager's name is Paige Schinberg and she's from Illinois State University. And I'll never forget the smile that she gave me. And I met so many great friends, not, 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 not just with the equipment managers or the football players, it's also with some of the assistant coaches, some, some with the video crew, some with the athletic trainers. Um, and as much as getting the, the t-shirts and the attire is all cool and stuff and being on camera for a couple, being on camera sometimes, like, you know, uh, there's shots of me on ESPN3 on TV. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. But it's also just the people people that make it great. And I think that's more rewarding than wristbands or a helmet or t-shirt. Um, I've gotten closer with some people. And not, not just that too, I've connected with some people who are play-by-play -play people, photographers. Um, that's so cool. Artists, yeah. So it's really cool. So um, I cannot be more thankful for this job. And it's my favorite job in the world far more than being a cash cashier um, and any any other job I've had in the past. Um, job is, but a job is a job regardless. That's wonderful. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Um, okay, so my social media, um, for, for my social media, my uh, username is, um, I'm proud to be an American 99. <laughs> But um, the name under that is Ralphie Scout Arella Yorizar. Um, my Snapchat is um, Ray Ray, you know, kind of like how it is here on my username. And it's Varela. It's V A R E L A. And um, my Twitter is a. Uh, my Twitter is a uh, Stingray, <laughs> you know, because um, I, I grew up with the name Ray, you know, at Sting, and then in all caps, R A Y Y Y. Thank you. Um, Thank you again, Ralph, for your interview, and best of luck in your future, wherever it may hold you. Uh, thank you very much, Brandon, for having me on here. Um, I wish you the best of luck as well, and um, um, keep watching your stuff and, you know, keep you updated as time goes on. So, thank you very much for having me. It's been a great honor to um, talk to you about this. You're welcome. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Ralph, for your interview, and best of luck. Thank you, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.